audible and visible all right so my abstract for today is uh, the spectrum of uh, mechanisms of resistance to uh, two commonly used drugs crizotinib and lorlatinib in ros1 mutant uh, lung cancer so the background to this is that we know that the current standard standards of care and the first line treatment of ros1 uh, positive lung cancer are crizotinib and entrectinib and we have some data for lorlatinib in the second line setting however we haven't really understood the mechanisms of resistance to both of these drugs and that is what the study sort of tries to address so the methods this is a retrospective analysis of 55 patients who were uh, who were treated between 2014 to 2020 from three centers in the us so mass general hospital mskcc and the university of california at irvine and uh, these were patients with uh, ros1 positive lung cancer who had progressed on uh, either crizotinib or lorlatinib and these patients went on to have a rebiopsy either in the form of tissue or plasma or paired samples and they initially set out to assess outcomes in terms of time to progression duration of treatment and what is being presented here is the mutational profile post crizotinib and versus post lorlatinib So when we looked at these patient characteristics there were in total around 55 patients among these 41 out of 55 had had crizotinib and 25 had had lorlatinib and 11 out of either of these two group there was an overlap of 11 patients so around a, a one fifth of these patients had had both the drugs and so the patient profile was kind of what we would expect with any a, a set of ros1 positive so females non smokers adenocarcinoma histology and uh, Uh, and so on so when we looked at the mutational profile so what i'd like to highlight here is that the blue uh, the blue part is actually patients who are wild type that is who have uh, a ros1 who did not have a ros1 mutation at progression and what you can see is that uh, on the left is post crizotinib and on the right is post lorlatinib majority of patients actually do not have a ros1 mutation and the ones among the ones that do have one the commonest one is the g2032r and i'd also like you to look at the left side on, at the post lorlatinib arm on top where there is a l2086 easy to remember l lorlatinib and this is again one mutation which we should be knowing about so moving on so ros1 kinase domain mutations happen much more often in patients post lorlatinib than in crizotinib so 46 versus 38% and like i told you in both instances the g232032r is the predominant mutation approximately a third in either setting now this like the alk 1202r this is a solvent front mutation and this causes a steric uh, clash and this again uh, is uh, is resistant to crizotinib uh, w- w- the relevance of this mutation is that this was identified in around 32 of pa- 32% of patients post lorlatinib but actually uh, it, when you actually look at the ic50 lorlatinib does not uh, does not address this mutation or does, is not effective against this particular mutation then we move on to the l2086 mut- f mutation now this is a selective mutation which is seen mostly post lorlatinib and uh, this again also causes a steric clash so this causes resistance to lorlatinib crizotinib and entrectinib but this may accommodate a type 2 inhibitor which is our cabozantinib now mechanisms independent of ros1 are there and these are actually more, more common in patients who are post crizotinib and uh, less common in patients post lorlatinib the various mechanisms which are there are of course mutations in the keras amplifications of the keras some endras mutations nf1 map2 kinase and so on now this again is the most important slide so we have sort of started seeing these slides uh, i think uh, you know we started seeing them in cml and now we have something similar in alk so i just like to highlight uh, when, when when we when we i don't know if you can see my pointer so when we look at the ic50 among patients who do not have a mutation that is the non mutant uh, row if you see across the board even things like entrectinib lorlatinib and the new agents like reprotrectinib even cabozantinib everything the ic50s are pretty low so you can safely use even either of these tkis in the second line setting however when we move on to the two mutations that we sort of address the g2032r this mutation very clearly is not very sensitive so the lorlatinib part is yellow it's uh, the ic50 is quite high but is sensitive to other drugs like reprotrectinib and tal taltrectinib now these two definitely are not accessible to us but cabozantinib is and now that we have generics this is this is a place where we could use it moving on to the l2086f mutation what you can see is that most of the drugs are resistant the only thing which actually works is cabozantinib 
And also one point for us to remember is that the L2086F, when we look down, it can coexist with other mutations as well. And even when it does coexist with those other mutations, it kind of takes precedence over the other mutation and, and confers resistance to most other, other drugs. Now, what I'd like to highlight here is that uh, when you look at the cabozantinib arrow, uh, when you look at the cabozantinib column, pretty much works in everything except ju just when you have the G2032 with another a compound mutation, uh, which is the S1986F. So now to conclude and uh, to, to sort of translate this into our setting, well, this seems to be the largest series of molecular profiling of resortinib and norlatinib resistant patients in ROS1. Uh, uh, kinase domain mutations mediate resistance in 30 to 50 percent, depending on whether you're post resortinib or post lorlatinib. It's more common post lorlatinib. There are two mutations which are resistant to lorlatinib, the G2032R and the L2086F. And uh, in the L2086F, uh, there is a role for us to use cabozantinib. ROS1 independent mechanisms are still there, but uh, in these mechanisms, second line TKIs may still be efficacious. Now, in our Indian setting, again, uh, a lot has been said about uh, rebiopsying patients, either you know plasma or or or, or um, tissue. And uh, if you don't really have NGS or mutational profile in the second line, uh, based on based on this uh, this this IC50. Cabozantinib, even though there may not be clinical data much to support it, cabozantinib seems to be prom promising uh, if you don't really know what uh, what what uh, resistant mutation mutation is there, because it is effective both in patients who have a ROS1 kinase domain mutations and among the non-mutant patients. So that is uh, that's all. So thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, next, I would like to invite Dr. Prabhat Malik from uh, Delhi for the next talk. <laughs> 